Well, good morning, St. Luke's. Thank you, welcome, I'm glad you all came. Uh, today is the second Sunday of Easter. Easter is an entire season of 50 days, Easter time. The themes of these weeks focus on new life, connection, and community. The readings will primarily be from the Gospel of John. You, Eastertide lasts until Pentecost, which this year happens to be May 19th. So one more time, as we all know, St. Luke's is a beacon of God's love, attracting seekers to come home. So all of you, welcome home today. I'm Carolyn Chapletsky, and I'm your senior warden. And what we usually do at this time is take a long, deep breath and settle into where we are. We've been very grateful to get here today with all of you. So on the count of three, a deep breath. One, two, three. Perfect. I have a few announcements. Uh, right after church today is the coffee hour. It's back in the uh, parish hall. And uh, Mike and Inga have been busy putting everything together. Uh, this week we had the newsletter come out. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, it comes out the first of each month. Um, and so if you have anything to add to it, please get in touch with Elaine or you can email one of us. We have a new, there she is, she's just waving to all of us. Um, the new directory is out and it's sitting at the back table. Um, and if you notice at the altar, not only do we have the Easter lilies, but we also have, it's the first of the month, first Sunday, we're also doing the collection for the Calistoga Food Bank. So Susie, do you want to mention what, we, what the Calistoga Food Bank is and what we're trying to do with the green bags? So to help us remember, on the first of each month, we're going to return our green bags, and I'll deliver them to the Calistoga Food Pantry. And once everything is weighed, they'll tell me how many pounds we've donated, and then I'll let you know. So to help you remember, it's the, the um, coffee hour is the first Sunday of the month. The newsletter comes out the first of the month, and our food pantry bags are due the first of the month. Okay? Um, uh, there are more green bags, so we're going to have some of those sitting in the back so people can uh, start bringing those in when they have a chance to pick them up and then drop them off the first Sunday. All righty, Altar Guild. That be our dear Inga and Mike, Connie, Janice, and uh, I'm probably f oh, I'm forgetting uh, Kathy. Kathy. Um, they need more helpers. So if you'd like to help on a Saturday setting up the Altar Guild and learn about the Altar Guild, you've got some wonderful people to teach you. Uh, so please get in touch with one of them or one of, or get in touch with myself and we'll get you involved with the Altar Guild. It's not, you don't have to be here every Saturday. You can do it, you know, sign up with them and do it when you have a chance. So when I say April 21st, you should all yell out community lunch. April, tw we'll try it next week. April 21st is our community lunch. So on that day, we're gonna have a service. It's gonna be a little brief. And then we're gonna have a couple speakers who talk about St. Luke's. Father Mac's gonna talk about what St. Luke's means to him. Um, and then we're gonna have a nice uh, catered lunch in the back. So I hope you will all come. There's flyers in the back. Please bring family and friends. Uh, Inga and Millie were great this week and walked around and knocked on all the neighbor's doors and let them all know what's going on. And they had a really good response, so that's great. I think people are getting curious because we've hit most of the service organizations now. Uh, Father Mac, I think, has been to Rotary, uh, Seroptimus, uh, it seems like every, but Chamber of Commerce. This week we're going to the Chamber of Commerce again. <laughs> the, the new Brannon Center, yeah, they see us coming and they all go, we know, we know, yeah. So um, what a better place to celebrate uh, that Sunday than starting off here. And the Wellness Week goes all week long in Calistoga, but it's a great opportunity to come here and get some, get some good energy going. So on that note, um, may this Sunday give you time for reflection, a sense of gratitude for arriving at this moment, and a renewal of courage to face what lies ahead. So on that note, a hymn, please. Morning, everyone. My name's Mac, and I'm a seeker. And uh, I do have to clear up a misunderstanding right away. This is uh, what they've referred to as Low Sunday, uh, the Sunday after Easter. You're not supposed to be here. And uh, most people have a huge misunderstanding that if they come to church on Easter, somehow that will give them access to heaven upon their departure. It's not true. 
it's the people that come the Sunday after. So consider yourself, uh, you know, a go to heaven free card. But um, anyway, this morning, our opening hymn this morning is uh, Love Divine, one of my favorites. The word will be on the screen. So uh, if you hit the lights back there, Janet, Nate, cue it up, and let's stand up and sing. Love Divine, all loves excelling.
That's what I want to be, lost in wonder, joy, and praise. If you would turn with me in the red book, turn with me in the red book to page 355. And you will find uh, in the middle of page 355, there are three acclamations. And the middle one is for the season of Easter. So here we go. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And together our college for purity at the bottom of the page. Together, almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the advent of Easter enkindles a spiritual reawakening, beckons an awareness of our conscience and a reflection of our moral inventory, inviting the restoration and renewal of faith for Christ whose unfailing love cleansed away our sins through the suffering of humanity's darkness, its mockery, betrayal, injustice, and brutality. Despite it all, he offered mercy and forgiveness, life eternal through his resurrection. Grant that we may reflect on our wrongful and regrettable ways as we seek to renew our faith through repentance, goodwill, and deed. May we continue to walk in the grace of your light, to live with love and be loved as a child of God. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one in Trinity, as it was, is now, and shall always be. Amen. Amen. If you'd be seated, please, for our scripture. The first scripture this morning is not from the New Testament. I mean, from the Old Testament, it's from the New Testament. And it's in your bulletin, if you would follow along with me. This is from Acts, right after the establishment of the church. You can imagine the verve that was going on of having experienced the resurrection and the establishment uh, of, of, the, of the church. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need, the word of the Lord. Our psalm is on the second page of your handout, Psalm 133. I'll read to the asterisk, and would you respond? Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron. It is like the dew of Hermon. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from John. 
We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we've seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not, and do, not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole word, world. <laughs> the word of the Lord. So uh, during our step 11, uh, let's come into the posture of meditation. Uh, the feet are on the floor. The spine is erect. Hands resting gently in your lap. The posture, one of dignity. Why? You are a human being. Remembering that in uh, step 11, we seek through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with the God of our understanding. Improve our conscious contact with the God of our understanding. And we come first into an awareness of the breath, just watching the breath come and go, being aware of the belly expanding and contracting. Our method, as we are traditionally here in St. Luke's, bringing the breath in for a count of four, holding the breath for a count of seven, releasing for a count of eight, four, seven, eight. I will guide you to the first two rounds, and you'll be on your own for the final three. Remembering again our intention, seeking to improve our conscious contact with the God of our understanding. So we begin then with a nice deep exhale, bringing the breath in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in.
And now just letting the breath come naturally. Continuing to watch it. And reflect on whatever change the practice might have brought about as the storm then calmed. And we conclude every session of meditation on a note of gratitude, grateful always for the gift of silence and the presence of God in our lives. Doesn't matter year A, B, or C, the gospel assigned for the second Sunday of Easter is always the same. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord Jesus said to them again, Shalom, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So a week later, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. And that is the gospel of the Lord. So, you know, I'm not uh, OCD or anything, but, you know, I don't care much for clutter. But, um, I'm, you know, we all have a little clutter. You know, there's a like a junk drawer, maybe, you just, you know, if it doesn't go anywhere else, it goes there. Maybe, you know, the back wall of the garage where, you know, if it doesn't fit anywhere else, the backyard, maybe a little pile where, you know, closet, certainly, nice place to put clutter. Clutter, 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 clutter. Builds up. You know, I remember in, uh, in prep school, this is great, you know, you have all these, you know, 
young, young men in these dormitory rooms. And in the springtime, they would have what they call a free day. It's a free day. And nobody knew what it was. And you were always like, when's it going to be? When's it going to be? And finally, they said, it's a free day. Well, it was free to a degree. But what you had to do on the free day, the first thing you had to do was take all the furniture out of your room. And usually, you had a roommate, you know, so take all the furniture. It wasn't much, like a desk and a chair, maybe a bureau. And take it out in the hall. You had to completely uh, remove all the dust from the room, windowsill, you know, the whole thing. And then after it was inspected, you had to put all your stuff back in, closets and everything. And then it was a free day. <laughs> By that time, it was time for lunch, and then you had the whole afternoon. But it was great. It was a break. But that was our version of spring cleaning. Every now and then, you just have to go in and muck it out. You know, my daughter, uh, I don't know where she got this. This is not a genetic gift, did not come to her uh, genetically. But she is a self-described minimalist. And uh, after my wife's departure, you know, Sandy died a little over a year ago, she said, you know, Dad, I think it's time we went in and took care of your closet. I don't think so. <laughs> but, uh, you know, here's what happened. She took uh, everything out of my closet. Everything out of my dresser drawers, uh, all, the, all this stuff, and just piled it in the center of the room. And she said, OK, you're going to make three piles. One is the stuff that you wear on a regular basis. The other is stuff that you haven't worn in a year, but you don't quite want to give a uh, part with. And third is stuff that you haven't worn and probably will never wear. Three different piles. So it took a while, but you know, got that all done. And then she said, OK, here's the way, the, the way we're going to put it all back. She put it all back in the bureaus and, you know, the closet and all that kind of stuff. And I got to tell you, that came, it was like a spiritual awakening. <laughs> I mean, I walked in my closet, it was like, I could hear angels. Ha, ah, ah. <laughs> And there's time, there's time, isn't there, when you just have to you have to clean house. You have to just go in and get rid of stuff that you don't need and you're carrying around. And every time you look at it, you think, ah, it just, it can weigh you down. It can weigh you down. It can weigh you down. And, uh, you know, you've all seen, you know, what happens on television, you know. I mean, I, I don't get hoarding. I, you know, there's people that do that, but. So uh, we come today, uh, you know, uh, my journey through the 12 steps with all of you was interrupted by COVID, kicked my, that too, and uh, interrupted our journey through the steps. And uh, we were on, I finished with step four we're tonight, today we're on step five. Anybody know what step five is, just from memory? Anybody? Step five? I'm sorry, could somebody raise a hand? Yeah. Right there on the aisle? Yes, sir? <laughs> Step five? Admit it to, thank you very much. Give that man a hand. <laughs> Admit it to God, to ourselves and to another human being, the exact nature of our wrongs. You know, one of the things that makes the steps difficult is that, uh, you know, the ego is not about to go down without a fight. And, uh, you know, when you think we spend a lot of money on the, the, the defense budget in the United States, that's nothing. Chicken feed. Uh, compared to what human beings spend on self-defense. I mean, we would put on a facade that even we believed was true in order to hide the things that we have stored up in our lives. And uh, in the program, you know, I mean, we all went through step four. We took an inventory. It's like any good business, just what's on the shelves? And uh, we were given you know, a lot of good examples of the kind of stuff to look for. Fear, resentment, 
where do you need to pour a little forgiveness, not only to yourself, but towards someone else? And what are the quirks with which you have lived for a long time that maybe you could do without? And let's make a list. Let's write it down. Let's be clear. Let's think about it. And uh, I don't know about all of you, but you know, I've made several step four lists and you know, just like my daughter going in and you know, mucking out my closet, it's, it's an amazing and a, and a powerful experience, but boy, that's just where the work begins. And so you know all that stuff is there, and uh, your uh, inventory, number one, has been fearless. Fearless. And you know, I shared the episode, uh, the, the image uh, the other day of the trapeze artist, and one of the reasons that the flyer, the flyer, can leave uh, whatever that swings back and forth the chair is because there's a net down below. And we know that God loves us. We do. Uh, you know, they call the Sunday after Easter the Sunday of divine mercy. They have that from the, that's the Catholic tradition, the Sunday of divine mercy. And we know that no matter what we've done, no matter what mistakes we've made, no matter who we've hurt, and no matter how badly we feel about ourselves, that God still loves us. And so we can enter into a moral inventory uh, without fear, because it's all good. It's all good. And the more you have that feeling of like, this is a good thing, the deeper you'll go and the more honest you'll, you'll be. There's no sense of trying to play the short game with your creator. So we make this moral inventory, and then we admit to God, to ourselves, and then it gets tricky. And then it gets tricky. Now, what is the power and what is the reason for having to tell somebody what's on your list? You know, you've been working so hard to hide this from yourself. And you for sure, you for sure don't want a lot of people to know about it. But where is the power in letting anybody know about it? Well, I think you have to look at the basic human condition. We're in it together. There's power in community. And we can be honest with ourselves as long as we are honest in community. Now, in the big book and in the 12 and 12, they're very careful about your selection of the person that you choose to share this information with because you're very vulnerable. You're very vulnerable. And so you want to make sure, number one, there's an ingredient of trust, that there's a, a degree a some degree of experience uh, in the other person. And number three, for sure, for sure, for sure, you will never, ever, ever hear it anywhere else. One of the things that a good confessor suffers from is amnesia. I don't remember it. You know, they say, now, the, the Catholics, and, you know, there are times and places where, of course, uh, Christians that have at this for a long time uh, really have a leg up. And in the Catholic tradition, of course, confession, like when I was growing up, uh, I had two Irish Catholic friends, uh, Bob Dowley and Freddie Cavanaugh, both Irish, Italian, uh, Irish Catholics, and uh, we would ride our bicycles up to St. Mary's, about a half mile up the street, and uh, we, we, we would prepare them for confession. Like, what are you going to tell him this week? Well, uh, I hurt my sister. No, you told him that last week. Well, I looked at a dirty magazine. No, you didn't. You didn't even have a dirty magazine. And we would make up these things. And the sacrament has been abused. Sacrament has been abused. And for whatever reason, in my tradition, confession, I've been in this business now ordained for 35 years. And in that course of 35 years, two people have come to me to make confession. Neither of them have been members of my congregation. 
I'm telling you, nobody's confessing. And without it, there's no spiritual growth. There's no house cleaning. It's just going to be there, and it's just going to weigh you down, and you'll never make the next step. And I don't know why it's true, but it's true. And they'll say, even in the program, that if you don't do step five and do it correctly, you're going to go back to whatever it is you were doing before because you haven't cleaned house. It's as simple as that. And so in my life, when I do my fourth step, I generally try to find someone I have in my past who is a seasoned sponsor. Somebody who's done this a lot of times with a lot of people who without judgment and great love and empathy can listen to everything that I've said and said, Mac, take that piece of paper and throw it away. And I'm telling you, when I get in the car and go back to wherever it was, it's like a whole different sun is shining. I don't know why. But it becomes a spiritual experience. So there's a couple of uh, gems of wisdom that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, the first is from the 12 and 12. This is like a companion uh, to the big book. And this is what it says about step five. You can take this for as many grains of salt as you wish. What are we likely to receive from taking step five? For one thing, we will get rid of the terrible sense of isolation that we've always had. Almost without exception, Addicts are tortured by loneliness. Nearly all of us have suffered a feeling that we didn't quite belong. Either we were shy and dared not draw near others, or we were apt to be noisy and gregarious, craving attention and companionship that we never got, at least to our way of thinking. There was always that mysterious barrier that we could neither surmount nor understand. It was as if our actors, and we were actors on a stage, suddenly realizing that we did not know a single line of the part we were to play. That's one reason that we loved our addiction so well. They did let us act extemporaneously, but even those gods betrayed us. We were finally struck down and left in terrified loneliness. But when we reached the fellowship and for the first time in our lives stood among people who seemed to understand, the sense of belonging was tremendously exciting. We thought the isolation problem had been solved. And we soon discovered that not only weren't we alone anymore in a social sense, we still suffered many of the old pangs of anxious apartness until we had talked with complete candor of our conflicts and had listened to someone else do the same thing, we still didn't get, we still didn't belong. Step five is the answer. It was the beginning of true kinship with God and with people. This vital step was also the means by which we began to get the feeling that we could be forgiven, no matter what we had thought or done. Often it was while working on this step with our sponsor or spiritual advisor that we felt truly able to forgive others no matter how deeply we felt they had wronged us. Our moral inventory had persuaded us that all round forgiveness was desirable, but it was only when we resolutely tackled step five that we inwardly knew we'd be able to receive forgiveness and give it to. Another great dividend we may expect from confiding our defects to another human being is humility, a word often misunderstood. To those who have made progress in the fellowship, it amounts to a clear recognition of what and who we really are, followed by a sincere attempt to become what we could be. Therefore, our first practical move toward humility must consist of rec rec recognizing our deficiencies, 
No defect can be corrected unless we clearly see what it is. But we shall have to do more than see. The objective look at ourselves we achieved in step four was, after all, only a look. All of us saw, for example, that we lacked honesty and tolerance, that we were beset at times by attacks of self-pity or delusions of personal grandeur. But while this was a humiliating experience, it didn't necessarily mean that we had yet acquired much actual humility. Though now recognized our defects were still there, something had to be done about them, and we soon found that we could not wish or will them away by ourselves. You know, it's interesting to me. Uh, one of the things that I am, I'm a lot of things, but one of the things that I am, I'm a gym rat. And uh, I like going to the gym early in the morning. It's when the hardcore are there. And, uh, you know, there may be uh, a couple of weeks in January, right after everybody's made their, you know, you couldn't find a Stairmaster, but by the middle of February, there we are. And, uh, you know, it occurred to me that most of the people that go to the gym don't need to go. Looking good, working hard, keeping it trim. And I think the same is true with church. Most of the people that go to church are good people. Most of the people that go to church know that God loves them. Most of the people know the thrill of worship and wonder and praise. Most people know that they're in relationship with not only an almighty God, but a loving God. And so there's a lot of people that come to church that don't have to make a terrible confession about all the stuff that they've done. But I find, personally, that there comes a time when I just need to clean house and write it down, and my conscience will direct me. And I've been listening all week long to Catholic clergy talking about the history of confession and why there's confession, and the wisest that I heard all said the same thing. Go when you feel you need to. Don't make it an obligation that you have to jump through like another hoop. That's not what the spirit of the step is about. It's about knowing that something deep needs to be done, so avail yourself of the sacrament of reconciliation. This has been one of the great gifts of the church. I've said over and over again, you know, Jesus uh, did not come to change the mind of God about people, as though, you know, I'm really sorry, God, they're not that bad. I'll die for them so that you can let them off the hook. That's not why Jesus came. Jesus came to change the mind of people about God. You've got it all wrong. God's not a judging God. You know, God doesn't put you on an anvil and raise the hammer and look for an opportunity to lower it. God's looking for an opportunity to shower you with grace and love. Why? So you can shower somebody else with it. And so we have this opportunity. And uh, for those in the program, a good sponsor, what a gift. What a blessing, a good sponsor. Uh, for those of you, sometimes a psychologist, sometimes a physician, a medical doctor, uh, these people are professionals who are swollen, sworn to amnesia. Or m maybe it's just someone who you know and trust, who you can say, man, this thing is under my skin, and I, gotta, I just got to tell somebody about it. And that really, uh, you know, is the, is the beauty of the Christian fellowship and life in general. It's amazing to me how many spiritual traditions all have this as a necessary part of the pilgrimage. You know, you come in here this morning and everybody's looking good, all showered up, you smell great, you do. And, uh, you know, you worship the Lord and you feel great and you walk outside and you see somebody driving by in a brand spanking new automobile and you think, man, I like me, I have one of those. 
Or you, you know, you look up on your uh, on the hill to one of these magnificent palatial homes that people have in the valley, and they are lovely. And you think to yourself, why does he have that, and not me? And you know, what are you going to do about that? Is that going to just sit there like some stagnant pool in your consciousness? So again and again and again and again and again, we go. We go back to it. And, you know, what I was referring to earlier about my, my own experience with step five is the experience, is what happens when you do give it to another human being and it's out there and not in here. And that's an experience. And this morning, I would like to pray for all of you. Lord, I thank you this morning, I do, for every soul here that's come on low Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, to gather together to be in this fellowship and to worship you. And I know, I know that we all carry stuff. And I would pray that you would give them strength and courage. It takes that and humility to be honest with themselves about themselves. It's some of the most difficult work on the planet, but it's always the difficult work that brings the highest reward. So I would pray, if it is your will, to put people in their lives that they can trust this information to and let them freely depart with it. And all this I ask, all this I ask in the name of the one who breathed on his disciples and said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Amen. Creed. 358. Please stand for the reading of the Nicene Creed on page 358. <clears throat> page 358. And together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Moving forward with the prayers of the people, please turn to page 388. I will lead each prayer, and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you will say, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, 
and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your own honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Turning finally to page 360. And this is our corporate uh, confession. This doesn't count. <laughs> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, and together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I'm sorry? Amen. Shalom, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Greet one another in the peace of the Lord. Hey, I meant to tell you, uh, Rita Tucker is in UCSF. She's getting uh, medicine, pain medicine. She's got cancer. And she's going to have a... Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, the strength and the
Any graduates of Duffy's? OK. Great. Bill, uh, would you and Gina come forward for a minute? You and Gina? Bill and Gina? So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of, of the pilgrimage uh, in Spain uh, uh, to, um, where, where is his name? Compos Compostelo de Santiago de Compostela. Santiago de Compostela. You can join hands at church. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Bill and Gina are making their way uh, to the pilgrimage. They've done it many times before. And uh, they'll be joined by other believers making their way to the great cathedral of St. James. But, um, you know, it's always a special time to take this time away from their busy lives. And these are busy people. Uh, to honor you and to walk this way that so many millions have walked over the years. But uh, I pray, traveling mercies, that your spirit would be in their hearts as they make their way. It's not altogether easy, but uh, along their way, fill them with uh, the courage and strength of their faith and, uh, you know, bring them back in one piece, if it's your will. <laughs> so uh, bless their pilgrimage and all those that they will encounter in the name of the one who you sent, in whose light we walk. Amen. Have a great walk. <laughs> bring, bring back a rosary. Oh, I got a special place. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll be moving into our experience now of the shared meal, uh, an expression of our gratitude. So um, all are welcome. You may be wondering, you know, should I come to communion? And you should. Jake's already up here. And uh, if you would begin again in a posture of meditation. And this is the Holy Eucharist. This is the great Thanksgiving. So we pause now to fill our hearts with gratitude uh, for the gift of life. You know, coming out of uh, three weeks of COVID, there's nothing like being really, really sick to make you really, really grateful for the gift of good health. For what this morning are you grateful? Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into separation and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemptional father in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink 
of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. And all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as we have been taught, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Ah, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them, remembering that the Christ is within. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Remembering again that wine will be in the larger chalice, uh, grape juice in the smaller. Please come forward. Body of Christ, the body of Christ, the of Christ.
And together, almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us all the mysteries that we are living members in corporate in the rear return kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work of feeding us today. Love and serve. Remind everyone there's coffee awaiting us in the parish hall once we're done. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and and remain with you always. Amen. Nate, if you'd cue it up, fairest Lord Jesus. And uh, Janet, if you would, the lights.
let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the resurrection, alleluia, alleluia, you will say, thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Not yet. <laughs> let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the resurrection, alleluia, alleluia. Alrighty then, let's have some coffee. Hey, Marilyn, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Boy, I'll tell you, that little plant that you gave me, I had no idea what it was. It but, improved. But it's key, it keeps going. Yeah, yeah. Hey, darling. Okay, well, let's Good to see you. Crazy. Hey, there. Good to see you. Oh 